The first incident was in Xingqing City. An extraordinary child was born who radiated light. After that, reports of people with superpowers popped up all over the globe. No one knows what was causing these quirks. Before long, the extraordinary became commonplace, and a new profession captured our collective consciousness. It was an age of heroes. How will you use your quirk? As a hero or a villain? In this video, we are going to learn how to play My Hero Academia, a CCG that is part of the universe's game system. This game system allows players to use cards from different IPs together in the same game. This video will teach you how to play My Hero Academia in 15 minutes or less, but please note that most of these rules will apply to all of the universe's games. Let's get started. The goal of the game is to reduce your rival's health to zero. A player also wins if their opponent runs out of cards after cycling, but unlike many other games, this is a game that is asymmetrical in its setup, meaning that while you both have the same goal, the character you choose to play with will determine how you get there. That means the first choice you will make and the first card type we need to look at are character cards. Your character card contains rules unique to your character, defining their unique personality on the battlefield, while adding flavor and tactics to your deck. Your character will also determine your total health and your hand size. Let's call on the number one hero, All Might, to look at what a character card does. Here is your starting hand size, which represents how many cards you can draw up to at the start of your turn. The number in the heart icon is your character's maximum health. This is how much health you begin the game with. You can never have more health than this number. However, if you bring your opponent's health to zero, you win the game. It should be noted that the higher your character's maximum health is, the lower the starting hand size will be, and vice versa. The Roman numerals on the right will identify which version of a character the card represents. There are multiple versions of character cards, so this isn't the only version of an All Might card. Setup. Now that you have chosen a character, we can set up the rest of the game. To play, both players need a deck containing at least 50 cards, plus a character card. Each card in the deck must share at least one of the symbols that appear on your character card to be valid. So, for example, if you choose Izuku Midoriya as your character, each card in the deck must contain either a good, life, or order symbol. Whichever one of three symbols you choose, every card in your deck must share that same symbol. You can have a maximum of four copies of each card in your deck. Card Anatomy The most common card types in your deck are Foundation and Attack cards. Let's go over what Character, Foundation, and Attack cards have in common. The difficulty number in the top left enumerates how difficult the card is to play. Much of the gameplay revolves around checking the difficulty of a card to be able to play it. This is essentially the cost of the card. The bottom right value is your control check. When you attempt to play a card, you flip the top card in your draw pile to perform a check. If the check is the same or higher than the difficulty number you are trying to play, you can play the card. If you do not pass the check, you fail to play the card and end your turn. We will dive more into that later. The top right is your block value. Blocks prevent your rival's attack from dealing damage. Anytime you see this at the top of the card, it means you can use this card to block an attack. Inside the text box is where you'll find your card's special abilities, which usually contain information on how to enhance your attacks or blocks to increase or decrease damage. One last thing to pay attention to on your cards are the keywords written below the artwork. They include things like the card type of an attack and abilities. Many cards interact with these keywords, so pay attention to how you can use them to your advantage. Game Zones Once you have a deck, game setup is simple. When the game starts, you will place your character in your stage, and then shuffle your deck. Your deck goes here. This is your discard pile, and it is where you place cards that are no longer in play, as well as cards used for check. You cannot shuffle your discard pile until you run through your deck. There are some cards that interact with the discard pile, so the order is important. 
Some other areas we will be using are the card pool and the stage. The card pool is where you will play your cards and where most of the action happens. Battles are fought and won in this zone. The stage is where you put foundation cards. These will stay in play after your turn ends. Randomly decide who will go first and you can begin. Gameplay. Before you start the game, there are a few steps before the first player takes their turn. Since player one has an advantage by going first, they must commit their character before drawing up to their hand size. This is similar to tapping or exhausting cards in other games. When a card is committed, its ability cannot be used this turn, unless stated on the card itself or a different card in your deck. Then both players draw up to their hand size based on their characters. Midoriya has a hand size of six, so we will draw six cards. If you do not like your opening hand, you have a chance to mulligan. To do this, take your entire starting hand, place it on the bottom of your deck, and then redraw to your hand size. You may do this one more time if you are still not satisfied with your starting hand. Ideally, an opening hand should have a lot of foundations. Think of foundations like training for combat. You wouldn't want to pick a fight without having a great foundation. So the more foundations in your opening hand, the better. After your mulligans, shuffle your deck. As player two, you start your character ready and may perform a single partial mulligan. The partial mulligan allows you to take any number of cards from your starting hand and place them on the bottom before redrawing up to your hand size. After mulligans, player two shuffles their deck. Now we're ready to head into the first player's turn. Phases. Gameplay in My Hero Academia has the following phases. The start phase, the combat phase, which includes the attack sequence when an attack is successfully played, and the end phase. For every turn except the first, you ready your cards, review your hand to see if you want to discard a card, and then draw up to hand size during the start phase. You use a lot of cards in this game, so when you run through your deck, shuffle your discard pile and remove the top 10 cards from the game. When you can no longer do this, you lose the game. After the start phase is the combat phase. Normally during the combat phase, players may play any mixture of attacks and foundations, but on the first turn of a game, both players are allowed to play foundation cards. Every time you play a card, you must check it. Let's talk about how to check. To check a card, discard the top card of your deck to the discard pile and compare the difficulty of the card to the check value of the card you are checking. If the check value matches or exceeds the value of the difficulty, it is successful. Added to the difficulty of every card is the progressive difficulty, which increases as you play more cards during the same turn. For example, to play the foundation passing the torch, the card has a difficulty of two. If it is the first card played, it would have the progressive difficulty of zero. We flip the top card in our deck and reveal a recovery girl's kiss, which has the control value of five. That means we pass the check and can successfully play our card. Remember, every time you play a card, the difficulty of the card you play is increased by one for every card currently in your card pool. This means that when you play your next card, the value of your checked card must match or exceed the difficulty of your played card plus one. The more cards you play, the higher the progressive difficulty and the higher the check value needs to be to pass. As you play out your opening foundations, make sure you account for this increasing difficulty. If you fail a check, you have two options. One, discarding the failed card, or two, committing a character or foundation card to add plus one to a check value. For every foundation committed this way, your check is increased by one. This is why it is so important to have a strong foundation. At any point during your turn, you may choose to stop playing cards and pass your turn. Once you end your turn, all foundations you've played move down to your stage. Now that we have played out our foundations, player two now has a chance to do an extra step of the game called the review step. During the review step, the second player may choose to discard any one card from their hand and draw back up to their hand size. After the first turn, this step is available to both players at the start of every turn. After player two has chosen whether to review on their first turn, they can draw a bonus card to start the game. On the second turn, players can start attacking. Attacking happens during the combat phase and happens by playing an attack card. Just like foundations, to play an attack, you need to pass a check. When attacking, pay attention to the following information. The damage, 
the speed, and the zone of your attack. The damage is damage, so that's simple. The speed is going to influence how hard it will be to block your attack. Attack cards can aim at the high, middle, or low zones. This will affect what cards are able to block your attack. After an attack has been successfully played with a control check, we will enter what is called the Enhanced Step. Enhances are abilities that can be used during the Enhanced Step. They will often modify the speed and damage of attacks, though they can do a lot more depending on the card. Both you and your rival will take turns going back and forth activating the Enhances on the cards in your stage, as well as the Enhances on the current attack. The attacking player gets the first chance to enhance. There is no inherent cost to enhance. Rather, each enhance states its cost. Some examples of cost include flipping a card, paying a momentum, or committing a card. If the card is committed, its text is deactivated until the start of your next turn. Similarly, if the card gets flipped, it prevents the card from having access to its abilities, but can still be used to pay for a check. You can use the enhance from cards in the staging area, your character card, and the active attack, but not from other cards in your card pool. Every card's enhance can only be used once per attack if you pay the cost. Once both players choose to consecutively pass on playing an enhance, we move to the block step. An attack is blocked by first matching the zones on both the active attack and the chosen block card in hand. To use a card to block, the card must be the same or an adjacent zone to the attacking card. For example, a card with a high attack cannot be blocked by a low card. Any attack that is successfully blocked with a matching zone will deal no damage. Any attack that is blocked with an adjacent block zone will result in the attack dealing one half damage rounded up. Just like playing foundations and attacks, blocks must be played by passing a check. To determine the difficulty of a block check, add up the speed of the attack and the block modifier of the blocking card, and the progressive difficulty from the card pool. Remember that if a check fails, the difference can be made up by committing foundations that are currently in your stage. If the block check passes, the card is fully or partially blocked. If it fails, the full damage comes to you. After the damage step, you return to the combat phase of the current player, where they can play more cards until they pass their turn or fail a check. Responses. In addition to enhances, many cards also have responses. Responses are all kinds of abilities, and they will say on the card when they can be used. For example, Encouragement says, Flip. After your unblocked attack resolves, discard it from your card pool. Flip is the cost to play this response. After your unblocked attack is the timing, and discard it from your card pool is the ability. As always, reading the card explains the card. Actions and Assets. There are two other types of cards you can play, but they are less common. Actions and Assets. Action cards are cards that you play from your hand during the same time as any similar ability. For example, if your action card has an Enhance ability, you can play this card during the Enhance step. Assets are permanent cards that often have very powerful abilities. They move to the staging area at the end of your turn, but cannot be used to pass checks. Both Assets and Actions require the same checks to play as any other card. Ending your turn. At the end of your turn, successful attacks may flip face down and then be placed behind the character card. These cards become a resource called momentum. Certain cards use momentum as a cost for an ability. Any attacks that didn't hit and any blocks made by the other player move to the discard pile. You will also move any foundations you successfully played down to your staging area. The game will proceed with turns that alternate back and forth. Players will continue to build foundations to stabilize their stage and play strings of powerful attacks to reduce their rival's health to zero and win the match. That should give you what you need to start playing the game. And you know what? Now is a great time to begin because a new set, Heroes Clash, is coming out October 21st and pre-release events are coming to your local game store on October 14th. Keep your eyes open for the very special Chrome Rares. Only 100 are out there. You can find a local game store holding events as well as the complete rules website in this video's description. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you, and now you are ready to go beyond Plus Ultra.